Man, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Darren, the Bowtie Fragrance Guy, and we talk about fashion and fragrance on this channel. So if you're interested in fashion-related content, and more importantly, or more um, specifically, fragrance-related content, I hope you guys don't mind hitting the subscribe button here. It doesn't cost you anything. Hit subscribe, it supports the channel. But hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell too. That way, uh, YouTube will notify you when I upload new content on the channel and you don't miss out. You want the first people to get that content. Hopefully, I guess. So on today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my 10 designer fragrances for life. This is a fun video idea, man. I'm so glad they came up with this idea. I don't remember exactly who did it originally, but it's just a fun video to do. Uh, a couple months ago, I dropped my 10 uh, fragrances for life, period, which included designer and niche, uh, private collections, all that stuff just in one. And most of those fragrances were niche or private collection uh, fragrances. At this point in my journey, man, what moves me a lot of times is something a little bit different, something a little bit creative. And uh, honestly, sometimes because they put a little bit more money, oftentimes, not all the time, but most of the time in two a more niche kind of fragrance. Those just seem to kind of uh, beat out the designers a lot of time. It's not really a fair comparison. So anyway, I still do love my designers and I have 10 here in my collection that I would say are my 10 for life. Like if I could only have 10 designer fragrances, these are the 10 that I would choose. Now I wanna go back and kind of compare this to the initial list I did like this a couple years ago. I didn't look at it beforehand, but I will go and look at it after I upload the video just to kind of see what's changed or what has stayed the same. But it's always a fun thing to do. So right after the intro, 10 designer fragrances for life. If I had to get rid of the rest of them, these are the ones that I want to keep. So if you want to see what's on my list, you know the routine. Keep it locked right here. Sky. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. We're going to jump into this list. Before I do that, guys, if you guys are just joining me on this channel here over the last couple weeks, or if you're just a person that did not and slept on this deal when it first came out, you guys know I launched three fragrances with Novices Parfums uh, about two months ago, which was Sartorial Nui, Divine Aphrodisiac, and I also have Old Devil Nairs upstairs. I didn't feel like going up there to get it, honestly. But guys, go support, man. Go ahead and grab these fragrances. If you use my link, and I'll make sure I link it down below, you can still get 10% off just by using my link. So the initial deal that we ran is over, of course, but you can still get 10% off. So make sure you head over to NovelistParfums.com and check these fragrances out. So the first fragrance that uh, I would keep for the rest of my life on the designer side of things is this one right here from Tom Ford, and this is called Black Orchid. Black Orchid. Now this fragrance, man, this was one that when I initially tried it, I tried the Eau de Parfum concentration when it has a gold plate on the front. As you can see, this one has black, all right? So this is the EDT, and for me, a little bit less was enough when it came to the scent. Now, when this one first was released, it was actually marketed towards women. It's definitely a unisex fragrance, but it definitely works for me on my skin. Performance is great. Uh, you have some florals in here. There's some tuberose. Uh, there is some truffle. This is very exotic uh, floral note. Uh, Yang Lang is in here. Uh, there's some fruity accords in the heart of it as well. And then you, in the dry down, you get that sweet stuff. You get some vanilla. You get some, uh, uh, what's else? And you get some vanilla and patchouli, I think it is. And that's what kind of gives that chocolatey vibe to this fragrance, but it's amazing. It is really an amazing fragrance, man. Like I said, a very exotic, floral, kind of almost gourmand feeling fragrance. And I just absolutely love this stuff. So the first fragrance, designer fragrance that is that I would keep for the rest of my life is this one from the house of Tom Ford. And this is called Black Orchid. And this is the Eau de Toilette. Now this next fragrance was one of my absolute favorites. If I had put these in order, 
Although this list is not in order, this would definitely be in my top three. Not sure where, but in my top three for sure. Um, but this one comes from the house of Mugler and sadly now discontinued, this is Pure Havon. Pure Havon, you guys have been following me for a while. Know the story on this one. I talk about how nostalgic this fragrance is for me. How it reminds me of uh, earlier days when I started doing fragrance reviews, man. Uh, when I was kind of collecting the Mugler fragrances, I remember I did a review of this fragrance and I was, wasn't feeling well. I was kind of getting over a cold when I did it. But anyway, a lot of nostalgia here. I heard it was discontinued and broke my heart. I got a backup bottle. So with as many fragrances that I have in my collection, that should be enough to still last me the rest of my life probably. But I love this one, man. Sweet, piped, uh, ch smell of cherry kind of tobacco is really what this fragrance is all about, man. It's some patchouli. I absolutely love this fragrance. Anyway, definitely one that I would keep for the rest of my life. One of my absolute favorites in my entire collection. That's designer Orniche. From the house of Mugler. Again, this is called Pure Havon. Now, the next work is up on the list that I will keep for the rest of my life. I go back and forth with this one and another fragrance from this collection. But this one comes from the house of Mason Margiela. The replica line. And this is by the fireplace. By the fireplace. Look at how much this juice has darkened over the years. And to say it has the uh, kind of not a year round kind of scent profile, I've worn it quite a bit. You know, there's a lot of juice missing out of the bottle. It's a nice dark, ambery color now. But you guys, I'm sure if you've been in the fragrance community now for any amount of time, you've heard about this fragrance before. Uh, it smells like the name. It smells like sitting by the fireplace, as the name indicates. So you got the smokiness to it. You got the sweet, uh, kind of almondy roasted chestnut kind of a cord in this as well and some vanilla on the dry down that's really basically what you're going to get with this but it smells phenomenal definitely reminds me of the time of the year that we're going to be going into fall more so even winter the holidays around christmas time love this fragrance so there's some nostalgia here with this one as well i remember being in the community when this one first came out there was a big buzz around it for good reason but anyway it's one that I will keep for the rest of my life. I go back and forth sometimes with this and Jazz Club, which I think is probably equally as good. Right now, I went with By the Fireplace. So anyway, definitely one I would keep from the house of Mason Margiela, By the Fireplace. This next fragrance is one that I've talked about very highly uh, on this list. It's one that a lot of people don't talk about, but I'm telling you, this is as good as it gets, man. From the house of Christian Dior. This is Dior Home Sport 2013. Oh, 12. It's 2012 or 13. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, there have been several variations of this fragrance or iterations of this fragrance that have been created. I think the original was around 2007. And then they changed it. And they changed it again. And then they changed it again here recently. This version is, again, that 2012 version, I think it is. I think it's 2012. And what this one is, is you have the freshness in the citrus opening. So you have that, but they still have the iris in this one. So on later versions of this fragrance, they took the iris out of it. And I really, really love this version of the fragrance. So because, because you have, you know, the nice citruses and the nice freshness in the opening, but then you have that nice powdery iris that is still in here. And it just makes for Again, one of the best fragrances I have in my collection, designer or niche. So again, if you compare this to the ones that came out here more recently where they took the iris out, not the same thing, man. You got to get the 2012 version. One of my favorite designer fragrances, and that's why it's on the list. This is Dior Homme Sport 2012. The next one that I will keep for the rest of my life is going to come as no surprise, you guys. So, you know, again, I won't spend a lot of time on it because you guys already know. If you... If I would ask you guys to vote before this, this is probably a fragrance that have gotten the most votes because you guys know how much I love this one from Tom Ford. This is Noir Extreme. Noir Extreme. Always gonna be, I'm sure, in my top 10 designer fragrances for life because I love it. Oh, man. This thing is so good. If you would, if he increased the performance on this, well, he actually did that with the uh, Parfum version. 
But my point is they could have sold us in the private blend collection and it would be one of the best, even in the private blend collection. It's one of my favorite fragrances. I did my top 20, 20 top four fragrances and this was in the top five. I want to say it was in the top three because it's that good, man. That Kofi in here was so creative. Kofi Mastic uh, was in here as well. Uh, just an amazing gourmand scent. One of my favorites is gourmand and floral all at the same time and it just comes together to work so definitely one of my top designer fragrances from the house of tom ford again this one is noir extreme now the next fragrance that i will keep for the rest of my life comes from the house of chanel and this blue chanel parfum blue de chanel parfum now this and dior survives kind of serve the same space for me it kind of serves the same purpose in my collection so out of the two I went with Dior, I went with Blue de Chanel. Not, to me, not quite as many people wear Blue de Chanel uh, as they do uh, Dior Sauvage, you know, it's, and which is a great fragrance. Again, I don't necessarily completely knock it for its popularity because it wouldn't have been that popular as it wasn't, if it wasn't as good as it is. But I just like the scent DNA a little bit better. Oh man, beautiful citrus is on the opening. And what I love about the Parfum version, I've always said this is, is more woody. So they turned some of the citruses down uh, from the EDT. They amped up some of the woods, the cedar sandalwood combination in this. And this is a masterfully done fragrance. One I'm always going to have. Love this stuff again. EDT is good. The Eau de Parfum is good as well. But this is my favorite. From that line, this is, of course, from the House of Chanel. This is Blue de Chanel Parfum. A lot of designer fragrances have been released over the past couple years, and although this one was released quite some time ago now, it's still really hard to replace this one as the best date night designer fragrance ever created. I would say this and Lana Weed alone rival one another. But this one comes from the house of Dolce & Gabbana, and this is the one Eau de Parfum. The one Eau de Parfum. I love this stuff. There's a lot of nostalgia here with this one as well. Um, one of the, I would say this is one of the first 10 designer fragrances I grabbed when I really started diving deep into the whole collecting thing. And it's remained as one of my all time favorites. You have a nice orange blossom with some amber and tobacco in this fragrance. And again, it just works for, again, cool weather, date night situations. One of the best fragrances still in the game. Uh, it doesn't perform that great. It's something that I've been, you know, quite, you know, of course, talked about. But it does not matter. When something smells this good, you know, for me personally, you know, your mileage may vary. I give it a pass. But this stuff is phenomenal. Always going to have it in my collection. Still one of my favorite designer fragrances of all time. And again, this comes from the house of Dolce & Gabbana. And this is called the One or the Parfum. Another designer fragrance that me keeping this for the rest of my life should come as no surprise. To those of you that have followed me for quite some time now, this one comes from the house of Paco Rabanne and this is called One Million Privé. One Million Privé. I love this stuff. Another one that sadly has been discontinued and I grabbed a backup bottle. That's something you'll find as a resounding theme when any of the fragrances on this list, once these go uh, to be discontinued, I grab a backup bottle. Top because as I said, I'm gonna keep them for the rest of my life. But anyway, this smells like apple pie, man. Apple pie has blood orange, myrrh, tobacco, amazing designer fragrance. Again, I've always said this. Think about fragrances like Wajan from Parfums de Marley. There's a new one from Beverly Hills. I meant from uh, Unique Luxury, the Beverly Hills exclusive fragrance. All those fragrances are uh, Amethyst from uh, Boulder City, Victoria. I'll have this kind of apple pie kind of vibe, but this was one probably the second fragrance I smelled that had that same vibe uh, after Wajan. And it's on the designer side of things, so if you can still grab it if you don't have it yet, this is definitely one that I highly recommend you get in your collection, especially if you like those fragrances that have that kind of apple cinnamon kind of thing going on. Love this stuff from the house of uh, One Million. I'm sorry, the house of Paco Rabanne. That is, this is One Million Privé. This next fragrance is the least expensive fragrance on this list. I talk about it all the time because out of all the designer fragrances that I have, this is one of my favorites. From the house of Burberry, this is Burberry Touch. 
Burberry Touch. This is like my second or third bottle of this, and I'm already kind of moving through this one. So underrated to me, man. It's the spices in here, the spices and florals. It's kind of powdery. I think it has violet leaves in here. That kind of gives that powdery uh, vibe that you would kind of probably akin to the smell of iris to some extent. Although it has a little bit more of a green uh, touch to it, but definitely powdery, florals, spicy, oh, man. and woody. This stuff is amazing, man. I love this fragrance so much. It's always going to be in my top 10. Again, this one is from the House of Burberry, and this is Burberry Touch. And last but not least, in 1996, they made what was probably considered the most popular designer fragrance of all time. And then they followed it up, I think, around 2015 with this masterpiece. Really hard for me to leave this one out because it's so versatile and does so much and it smells so great. It's from the house of Aquio, uh, from Giorgio Armani and this is Aqua Digio Profumo. Aqua Digio Profumo. And I love when I talk about this fragrance because it's really easy for me to kind of explain what this fragrance smells like. But again, if you take the original Aqua Digio, you add a little bit of smoky incense and a little bit of patchouli, and that's what you get in this bottle. Maybe not from the, uh, you know, your logical thinking, you would think that would work, but I promise you it does. I love this fragrance again because of its versatility, because it reminds me, of course, of the original Aquadigio with a twist, and it's a twist that I love. I think it added some versatility to the DNA by adding the incense and the patchouli to an already, you know, again, by all account, most accounts, a, a magnificent DNA of the original Aquadigio. So again, easy choice, one I'm always gonna have to have for the rest of my life from the house of Giorgio Armani. This is Aquadigio Profumo. But that's it guys, that's my time. I hope you enjoyed this video today as I gave you my 10 designer fragrances that I will keep for the rest of my life. As always, I sincerely appreciate your time. Appreciate your attention to these videos. I know you guys don't have to watch, but you do, man, and I sincerely appreciate that. And don't forget to make sure you take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure, guys, you're sharing these videos out to some other folks that you think could use this information or maybe even find it a little bit entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good. Keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.